Last week I got to interview chicken expert Florida Bullfrog who has a channel on YouTube and he is also the author of the brand new book Free Range Survival Chickens. And one of the questions I asked him was how did you end up finding these varieties of chickens that are pretty much predator proof? Chickens that can feed themselves, chickens that don't need factory bought feed or a chicken gulag to survive. An uncle of mine gifted me with um, what they call game chickens. And as a, as a child, I heard the word game. And when I saw how they lived, I associated game, they're just like a game bird, like a turkey, these wild chickens that took care of themselves. Now, that, that term game fowl has more meaning than that. Uh, historically, the game fowl are the chickens that were used for cockfighting. But the, um, my, my uncle had given these to me and just said they're going to just take care of themselves. And there was this beautiful, beautiful rooster, mature rooster. Um, and then several mature hens that he came with and they did, they just walked around my farm and took care of themselves. They roosted in an oak tree, um, over the top of a, a water oak that had extended over the top of our house. And they just, they, I, I don't recall losing any to predators, uh, just tough birds, self, self-sufficient birds. And, um, I just took for granted that in the way my family talked about game chickens, that everybody knew what a game chicken was. And um, when I uh, went to college, I gave up my flock. I, I, I sent my game chicken flock to another family member. And um, I ended up going several years without chickens through college. And my wife and I met, dated, got married. And for our first few years, we lived in town. We actually lived in Ocala. And we knew that when we wanted to start a family, we wanted to move out to the country like how we had grew up. And uh, when we bought our farm up here in North Florida, I said, I want some game chickens like I grew up with. And then lo and behold, I went to um, try to find some thinking, because back then they were common. This would have been the, the 80s and the early 90s. Um, nobody knew what I was talking about. And I went on this odyssey. It took me about a year and a half to find chickens that approximated like the kind I grew up with. And I started to realize that nobody knows anything about these birds, what happened. So that, that really started me throwing myself into the, the research of, of understanding what exactly all are these birds that are different than, than kind of your standard chickens. And, um, and how come nobody knows about them? Because when I was a kid, everybody knew what they were. I mean, everybody, every, almost every farm had game chickens running around. Um, so what happened to that knowledge? And that, that's, that's really how I got to where I'm at right now. And, um, and, and it, it's a lot of lost knowledge um, that really, really died with an older generation, really, really started to disappear after my grandparents' generation. In Florida Bullfrog's new book, Free Range Survival Chickens, he shares a ton of information on how to find the varieties of chickens that can thrive on free range, that are practically predator proof, that do not need purchased factory feed, but can lay eggs and provide meat for you, and how all of this works in an old fashioned way before the hatcheries and before we had to have a chicken gulag and before we had all these cutesy fluffy breeds, etc. This book is going to be very useful for a lot of us, particularly as inflation is pinching our budgets. So if you have a little bit of land and you wanna free range some birds and you wanna know how it was done in the past and how you can create your own survival flock, this book is a must have resource and it changed the way I look at chickens. So I'm very honored to have Florida Bullfrog able to join me for this interview and share some ideas with us. I'll put a link to that book below, Free Range Survival Chickens by Florida Bullfrog. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green.